That I might know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His suffering that I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead that I might apprehend that which I've been apprehended for. Central to the Gospel according to John is the identity of Jesus Christ as the Son of God. Jesus is introduced right off the bat in the first few verses as the Logos. Uh, this is Greek for the word who has be, been in existence from all eternity with the Father. The book of John places a laser focus on the person of Jesus Christ as the Son of God. So John writes this truth as a living witness of the glory of Jesus who is the only begotten Son of God. So he writes in verse 14, And the Word was made flesh, that's John 1, 14, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So John was an eyewitness of the glory of the Son of God. He was the only begotten Son in the flesh at his incarnation. So John was witness to the sort of the dual natures of Jesus Christ as the Son of Man and as the Son of God. When he witnessed the transfiguration on the mount and at the glorification into the presence of God the Father when he resurrected from the dead in glory. The knowledge of Jesus as the Son of God fully communicates Jesus' divinity. So here we see John throughout the book diligently walking to make it clear that Jesus as the Son of God is central to the gospel message. This is what transforms us from being wretched and worthless in death to become living stones upon which God is building his church. In Matthew 6 verse 13, it says, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, some say that you are John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But this is what Jesus said to them. Who do you say that I am? You see, my friends, this is the point where a life is transformed from the bondage of sin and the chains of death to the glorious life and liberty of the children of God. When he comes to you, who do you say? that I am. This question brings 
an individual's life to a, a watershed moment. In the new age spirituality of the West, the mysticism of the East, and the idolatry of the South, Jesus is widely regarded as a good man. Some even see him as a great moral teacher. Others say he is a prophet. And interestingly enough, this is what the disciples said to Jesus earlier. Some say you are a prophet. And many see him as some sort of manifestation of love. Agreed, while Jesus is all of these, all of these are less of him. For sure, he is a prophet, but more than a prophet. He is indeed a good man. As a matter of fact, Jesus is the only good man. But he is more than a good man. He is a great moral teacher, absolutely. But he is far more than just a moral teacher. Even as Jesus taught the world about love, he is more than love. All of these put together are less of who Jesus is. In getting an answer to this question, Peter answered Jesus, and Peter is also uh, translated as Petros in Greek, which means rock. He answers this question under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Let's listen to what Peter answers in verse 16 of Matthew 16. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Did you hear that? Jesus is the Son of the living God. He is ordained and titled as the Hamashiach, or in Greek, the Christos, meaning the Messiah, the Christ. And here we see Peter say in 1 Peter 2 verse 5, that we also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. He is the Christ, the Son of God. Also, an another important tenant in John's Gospel is that Jesus Christ is God. He is God as the Son of God. He is equal to the Father, as we see in John 10, 30, when Jesus proclaims, I and the Father are one. Yet the Gospel also emphasizes that Jesus has come in submission to the will of the Father who sent me. As he said in John 6, 38, For I have come down from heaven, not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. Clearly, we can see that the person of Jesus in the Godhead with the Trinitarian understanding is equal to the Father in, in beingness, in matters of being. That is, we can say, in an ontological sense. But yet he is subordinate to the Father in matters of his work. We can also say in, in an economic sense. But Jesus is fully equal in being, power and glory with the Father. As we see in John 17, 5, when Jesus prays, Now, Holy Father, glorify me 
with the glory that I had with you before the world began. This is the person of Jesus. And an, an understanding, a knowledge of the person of Jesus is critical for us to understand and appreciate the magnitude and significance of the work of Jesus as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The one who baptizes us with the Holy Spirit and fire. The one who will gather the wheat into his barn and burn the chaff in unquenchable fire. So only Jesus Christ alone can perform these works of God. Only the Son of God is big enough to take away the sin of the world. Only Jesus Christ, the man of whom John the Baptist exclaims, I am not even worthy to loosen his sandals, has the broad authority to baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. So Jesus says of himself in John 6 verse 38, For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but to do the will of him who sent me. The will of God, the Father, Almighty, who is the creator of heaven and of earth. So Jesus Christ manifests his saving grace in the work of redemption. And he identifies himself. And this is how Jesus Christ speaks of his work. I am the bread of life, which the Father gives. And anyone who eats of this bread will never hunger. I am the light of the world. You see, in him was life. And that life was the light of man. I am the door. In Christ alone, our hope is found. So we enter and we take refuge under the shadows of his wings. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. As a shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. As a shepherd, I call my sheep by their name. Jesus Christ knows you individually. And he lays down his life in his death on the cross. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. And I'm bringing the dead to life. He that believes on me shall not see death, but shall pass from death unto life. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So Jesus alone and exclusively is the only way to the Father and to eternal life with God. Finally, he says, I am the true vine. So through him, we, the branches, find our life and fruitfulness to bear fruit of righteousness. These seven I am's statements of Jesus in John's gospel highlight his chief work in redemption. And they all sort of come together in a, in a seeming crescendo of the work of Christ in his death for our sins and his resurrection into glory for our life. So he says, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. Yeah, the temple is signifying his body that will be destroyed in dishonor and raised up in glory. Destroyed in weakness and raised up in power. Destroyed in natural body and raised up a spiritual body that in him and by believing in his name we may have eternal life. So the promise of redemption in Genesis that the seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent and the work of grace and the eternal glory of God have found its fulfillment in the person of Jesus Christ as the only begotten Son of God. There is no way, no best way to close an introduction to John's Gospel than with the most quoted verse in the entire world from the Bible in John 3.16. For God so loved the world 
that he gave his one and only son, his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have eternal life. The quest to cheat death and to live forever is found in Jesus Christ. If we can see anything about the book of John, it is of the Son of God giving us the right to become the sons of God. And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed unto his death that I might apprehend that which I've been apprehended for that I might apprehend that which I've been apprehended for being conformed unto that I might apprehend that which I've been apprehended for